Hello and welcome to the ultimatehouse.com where you can learn how to design and build yours. My name is Otis Bradley. This here is Lucy helping out. Today we're going to talk about cabinets. Why cabinets? Cabinets are important. They're they're really built-in furniture and although they don't go in until the end of the job and it's really a part of finished carpentry which is done at the end. There's a lot of planning that is involved particularly in places like the kitchen where you have a lot of appliances and mechanical equipment that has to be installed in the walls such as plumbing and electricity um, that can also happen in bathrooms and even in bookshelves or closets you know there's a lot of different places and different ways to use carpentry so I thought we'd do a little overview of cabinets to help you understand how to get what you want so we're going to start off with a brief history of furniture and cabinets and we're just going to go right into base cabinets, upper cabinets, how they're built, materials and so forth and then we'll go into a little bit of how you set up the plans, how you plan kitchens and bathrooms and so forth and then at the end I have a few different projects that we worked on to show you a variety of different types of cabinets. Okay, so history. Well there's lots of evidence of furniture thousands of years ago going back to the Syrians, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans. We're going to jump from there really to the Middle Ages, late Middle Ages and from there right into what we're talking about. But Egyptians, Greeks, this is I think a Roman day bed. A lot of this furniture was very heavy carved wood uh, painted appliques on top but you can see it's uh, very thick, very heavy furniture. This might have even been carved out of one giant log or a couple of logs and put together uh, using tongue and mortise kind of techniques and so forth. You can see heavy carving type things for the legs of this table. And that led into, for the more common type applications, basically plank type doors. And this is even an early window without glass in it but you can see what this really is if you look at a, an early door it's simply planks of wood that are put together with more planks of wood maybe a rail like that maybe a, a Z type thing for a brace and then it's fastened so if you're looking at the end you have big thick heavy planks This would be as, as though we're looking at this end and then a frame on top to hold it all together. Well, by the end of the Middle Ages, the, the late 1600s, early 1700s, the guild system was in full scale and the, really the, the finest kinds of furniture are examples like, like Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King was doing. And this stuff is really amazing. I've seen some of this at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. It's really amazing. This is what they call marquetry. There's all kinds of little tiny pieces of wood you can see in here and then gilted with gold and uh, all different types of woods. Sometimes there are there is mother of pearl embedded into the the marquetry. Um, another example. Obviously that's not the common person but you can see all the thought that was going into the design. These are just examples of different legs. Here's uh, some Louis the 14th and then we've got Louis the 15th and even the 16th. Different examples of the types of furniture. Just the legs. I thought they were putting into the legs. And then here are styles of different chairs from English to to French and, and different styles. There's Chippendale, um, even Art Nouveau as the design of furniture advanced we see a lot more options but really the, one of the main reasons I wanted to show you all this stuff is well one of the developments that we still use today uh, that was invented was really the system of frame and panel construction so what we have here is an exploded drawing of uh, a frame which are these four pieces on the outside and then the panel in the center so you have styles 
on the sides and rails. Tell that to your cabinet maker, he'll be impressed that you want your styles and rails to be the same dimensions. Um, but the the four the these four the styles and rails are put together to make a frame and then the panel fits in the middle and it has room for expansion and the panel might actually even be two or three pieces of wood because it's hard to get a solid piece of wood that's of large width that's flat and stable. So here's another type of drawing of the, the style and rail or the frame and panel construction. Um, you can see here this would be the the rail, this would be the rail, and this would be the style. And you can see this is a flat panel, actually probably a piece of plywood, uh, a thin one that's set into these edges. And you can what that allows the center panel to do is expand and contract slightly. And that allows us to build all kinds of things from uh, things like these shutters here and even the windows you can see that's frame and the panel in that case is glass. Um, in the early days I think you only had sort of six inch by six inch or something like that was the maximum size of glass that they can manufacture so these are muttons and mullions for window construction but the same same kind of idea. Here's a colonial house where you can see a frame door and windows and a lot of other woodwork and even back in the early days if you were if you were doing a fancy house and you wanted a finished room like a dining room or a library or something like that the whole room would be constructed with uh, frame and panel type style so you can see here's a design for there's the door coming into the room and then all of these panels are set into frames there's one, there's another here, and, and a third one, and then, then the room is divided. This is what's called a chair rail um, at chair height. This is also called wainscoting, but that's sort of a uh, frame and panel or style and rail panel construction that was used for a whole room. And this is one of my favorite examples. This is the Gamble House in Pasadena, California, built by Green and Green architects who were really fabulous designers and I've been to this this project probably eight or nine times and it really feels like you're inside a cabinet incredible hand built detail in here but the reason I show you this is simply because we're talking about cabinets and I wanted to show you how that frame and panel style is something we still use today and, and really the main feature of your cabinets. Now this is what you would call a typical door and it's a wood door, right? And it looks like a solid wood door, but with today's types of construction, if we took a side cut of that door, say we took this door and we cut right through here and looked at a section, that would be like this. We even have smaller pieces of wood not all the time, but you can have a thin piece of wood on the top and then smaller pieces inside that are making up that door that looks like a solid frame. It's not a solid frame. It's actually almost like a plywood. And then here's your panel, which has a, a thinner part of the panel going into the door here with room for expansion and contraction. Just some things to think about when you're ordering your cabinets. We'll talk about the doors a little bit more. Cabinets in, in kitchens are really their base cabinets and upper cabinets or full height cabinets. But this is a drawing I made up in, in 3D to show you the main styles of cabinets. Really, what I did here is framed and frameless. So these are real, think of these as three different cabinets here. One, two, three. And this one here is an example of frameless. And you can see this door and drawer, they cover right over the edge of the frame. Then for illustration, I just left this one without a door. And the third one here is a framed cabinet. So you can see right in between here and here is a frame that goes all the way around the door and the drawer. So in this case, the drawer and the door 
are inset into that frame. So just another illustration, a framed or a face frame cabinet literally has a frame like this attached to the cabinet. And then the doors are either set inside or on top of that. A frameless cabinet does not have this and the doors are simply attached to the side panel. Another graphic illustration here is uh, in the green you can see there's a frame attached to the, the case or the cabinet were on this one here whereas on this one there is no green frame the drawers are simply attached to the the case now the reason we talk about framed and frameless is uh, if you want a more traditional look you might choose a face frame style probably 80 percent of all cabinets these days are frameless and you can make frameless look like framed but they're also called Euro style. And if we were looking down on those cabinets, there are several ways you can do your doors and drawers. So the full overlay, you can see the door comes out to the same edge as the cabinet frame, which is the same as, as this type of design. You can also set that door back slightly or you can even inset that door which looks very much like the face frame except that you would only have whatever the the width of your panel is in between so again face frame you can see here's the here's the 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 box and then this part here is the frame so everything from this line forward is the face frame that's attached and once again you can have your doors I'm going to erase all this. You can have your doors overlay that frame a little bit, a little bit more, or you can set those doors right inside the frame, which is an attractive look for the more traditional style. So we'll get more into that. But again, on upper cabinets, same thing. I divided this into three cabinets, simply leaving the middle section open. But you can see how this door lays on top of the frame. And this door here is set inside the frame. Uh, obviously, these are two different kind of panels here. This is a flat panel inside the frame, and this is a beaded panel inside the frame. I also added some crown molding on the top of this upper cabinet, and you can add uh, something below as well. And, and there's a good reason to do that. If you have if you want to do lighting up above, it's nice to have something to set the lighting into so you don't see a big light on top. You can also extend this down slightly so you can hide lights underneath. This is what a, a side view, uh, an architectural elevation would look like. And the typical kind of rule of thumb for cabinets is they're 24 inches wide. For the base cabinets and then the upper cabinets are 12 inches deep typically the upper cabinets are 18 inches above the base cabinet the base cabinet is 36 inches above the floor you can see there's a what's known as a toe kick here that gives you a little place when you come up close to the cabinet so you don't scuff the cabinet now these are rules of thumb and there are good reasons to stick with these rules of thumb because all appliances, dishwashers, sinks, under counter refrigerators, warming drawers, microwaves, they're sized to fit into these cabinets. I had one project where the woman really wanted to have 14 inches instead of 12 inches because she had really big dinner plates and she wanted them bigger so we made them a little bit bigger. I've also had clients who didn't like 36 inches and they wanted their cabinets to be tall. And that's a little bit more problematic because then if you have a if you buy a Viking range or whatever kind of range or dishwasher you buy, it's going to be made for a 36 inch counter so you're going to have to fill in underneath it to make it look appropriate. Oh, one more thing, if if you Again, if you wanted to, you know, this one shows a, a crown on top. You can also extend your cabinets slightly 
lower and have a little space here for lights or sometimes there are under under the upper cabinets people like to attach TVs or uh, there used to be things like can openers or um, other types of appliances that you might attach to the bottom of the upper cabinets so that's something to think about all right so a little bit about materials we've got um, all kinds of materials cabinets are made out of starting with solid wood typically most cabinets are only solid wood on the face frame if you have a face frame or on the doors and drawers most cabinet boxes are made out of plywood three-quarter inch plywood on the sides and maybe half inch on the backs um, you also have particle board MDF or medium density fiberboard plastic laminate or melamine thermofoil you can also have metal cabinets if you look at this drawing here, it shows a variety of different products. This is a sort of a hard board. You've seen this stuff before. If you ever look at a cabinet from IKEA, they are the masters at engineering absolutely the cheapest, lowest cost material. Often their drawers, their drawer bottoms are made of literally cardboard that gets slid in there. Amazing that it holds up, but it does. But anyway, you have MDF, which is basically a type of a, a particle board. It's very, it, it's very dense, much denser than the old style particle board, which you really don't see very much anymore. You also have plywood. Um, these are two examples of plywood. This one here looks like a little bit of a rougher construction grade pi plywood uh, compared to this one. And here's a thicker MDF. I like to make cabinets out of what's called, what's called Swedish ply or multi-layer uh, ply. You can see this has one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven different plies to it. That means there's, there's wood going in different directions all laminated together. And it's very dense and solid and doesn't have a lot of voids. And then the veneer on the top is typically pre-finished as either a uh, maple or um, it could be a, a darker colored wood if you want but this is typically what we use for our cabinet cases and then put the doors on top of it which I'll show you um, you can it's also popular to use melamine which is basically a thin type of a formica or laminate type material on the inside of the boxes and you can get the plywood with that attached to it <clears throat> 